The patient lies supine with his forearm and hand supported on a side table. A tourniquet should be applied with exsanguination of the upper limb. The incision is given in a straight line. Starting at a point which is lateral to the insertion of biceps tendon at the level of flexor crease in the elbow. From this point, the incision is extended in a straight line up to the radial styloid process. Only a part of this incision is used depending upon the site of fracture in the forearm. Suppose there is a mid shaft radius fracture, then only this much of the incision will be used so that a proper size plate can be applied. We always prefer an interval which lies between muscle groups supplied by different nerves. It is called an internervous plane. In Henry's approach, we always use the internervous plane between brachioradialis, which is supplied by the radial nerve, and the flexor carpi radialis muscle, which is supplied by the median nerve. And this is the internervous plane that we are going to discuss further. The other structures which can be seen in this approach at this plane is the radial artery which lies between the tendons of brachioradialis and FCR and the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm which lies in the lateral aspect of the incision. The next step is to incise the fascia and develop the plane between the brachioradialis muscle and the flexor carpi radialis muscle. On separating both these muscles, a leash of blood vessels which are going from the radial artery towards the brachioradialis can be seen. These, these vessels must be ligated to mobilize the brachioradialis laterally. After lifting brachioradialis muscle, the superficial branch of radial nerve can be seen below the brachioradialis which has to be retracted laterally along with the muscle and these vessels will be retracted towards the medial side. Now we have come to the deep plane of the forearm muscles in Henry's approach. The deep plane has four muscles from proximal to distal end. These are the supinator muscle, pronator teres, flexor digitorum superficialis and pronator quadratus. The supinator muscle arises from the anterior aspect of the proximal third of the radius. Then it winds around the radius and is inserted into the ulna and the lateral part of distal humerus. So you can see that the supinator muscle, so you can see that the supinator muscle winds around the proximal one third of the radius bone and is being inserted into the ulna and the distal part of humerus just below the lateral epicondyle. The supinator muscle attachment forms the arcade of flows. The PIN branch which is also known as the deep branch of the radial nerve passes below this arcade to enter into the posterior compartment of forearm. On full supination of forearm, the PIN nerve shifts laterally and away from the operative field. The supinator muscle insertion is cut. The supinator muscle insertion is cut followed by elevation using a periosteum elevator. The pronator teres muscle is attached to the middle of the radius, proximal ulna and distal humerus. Its radial attachment is cut and elevated while this figure shows the pronator teres muscle and the fibers are going in opposite direction to the supinator muscle. The pronator teres muscle is cut and its attachment is elevated from the radius bone while the forearm is kept in a mid prone position. This completes our exposure of the radius bone for forearm fractures and the plate can be applied on the appropriate surface.